In yesterday's video, I gave you first look at Elemental Beta version 3.26, and I focused mainly on the dynamic off canvas for your loop grid, whether it's post products, custom post types, custom fields, it all works. And I quickly went through it. I want to take it a step further and just show you how you could really use it for a quick view. Imagine you've got a shop, and by the way, you could be doing this with posts as well. But imagine you've got a shop and you've got your buttons, you know, add to cart and all of that, but you want to have a quick view. And normally you would be using third party plugins or other things like that. I've clicked a button and now I get my quick view. I've got a carousel going on there. Imagine these are images, all right? Humor me a little bit. I've got my image there and now I've got some more text. You could have your meta information, additional information. Maybe you've got ingredients or nutritional value and stuff like that. And of course, you still have your add to cart. So if I was to go to this one over here, I get different images and different description and the same over here. And you can see how... It doesn't matter how long the description is, it's all nicely set up. This is all done with the off canvas widget, which from Elemental Beta version 3.26 is now going to be dynamic. So let's just have a quick look at how this was built. On this page, we got a container, we got a heading and we got a loop grid. The loop grid only has three columns and it's going to show six items, okay? And I've gone and put over a template and I'm going to show you how I built that template. The only other thing I changed was to ensure the source for this was products. If you wanted to do this for custom post type, you can do. Please don't think, oh, it's not fully there yet. This is really well thought out from what I can tell at the moment. And I definitely think you should be testing this out, even though it's a beta version. And I can't wait for the full version. Please do remember, though, this is beta 3.26 for the free and the pro. Don't do this on a live production website. OK, let's go over to our loop grid and let's now click edit template inside of our template. We obviously have a container. We have an image and, you know, you can go and set the image up to be how you want in terms of sizing cover. What I did do, though, is pick the featured image. Now, if you weren't going to use a featured image, you could hit the dynamic tag, scroll down and go and pick an ACF image field as well. I don't really have one for this particular product, but if you wanted to, you could have done that. And then when we get to the link for the image, I went and clicked the dynamic tag and I clicked post URL. So if you click that, it would actually take you to the single product. Now, I do want to point out that sometimes when you are designing and building things, sometimes you've gone and set the size up and it skews a little bit. If that ever happens, don't worry, OK, just go and hit publish, save and back and refresh your page. It will look fine on the actual preview or the live screen. Down here, we've got a post title. Again, you could have used a heading, hit the dynamic stack and you could have picked the post title or another custom field. Over here, we've got the product price. And down here, I've just used the custom add to cart. You can use the standard add to cart as well. These are all standard elemental widgets. And then I also added in a button as well. You can see it in the structure. Now, in terms of how I got it to overlap, by the way, it's just a normal button. OK, I mean, it does open the off canvas, which I will get on to, but it's just styled to be slightly transparent. And I've added in a bit of border. There's no hover effect, but you could go and add some animation if you really want. But what I did, though, with the image, because the way I've built it is image, then button, then the title. If you go to my image, you go to your advanced tab, I did a minus 62. If I do that, you can now see where it's currently positioned. So I just got that to overlap a little bit over the image. Obviously, I've given the game away and I kind of did right at the start with regard to off canvas. But this button is going to open the off canvas and you can see the widget over there. I'm going to come on to that in a moment. While I'm here, though, let me just show you how you would have done that. So if you imagine you've added in a button, you would click the dynamic tag. You would scroll down until you get to off canvas. You click the spanner or the wrench, a bit like when you're adding in custom fields, to be honest, right? Whenever you're using dynamic tag and I've set this to be open off canvas and I've selected my off canvas widget now. OK, I've just left the name as off canvas. I could have renamed it and given it a different name and then you would go and pick that name. Now let's focus on the off canvas. Now, as soon as I click it, it is going to open up. You can close it down. But the idea is, is that when you drop an off canvas widget in, you're just going to get like a blank pane on your left hand side of your screen. So the first thing is I've set the horizontal and the vertical to be centered. I've also set the width to be 900 and you would go and check this out on the tablet and the mobile. OK, maybe you will have it be 100 percent on the mobile. There's no need for it to be like in a little bit or have any margin or padding. You can decide. And I set the custom height of this to be 600. And that's basically it. I haven't added in any animation. I haven't changed any of the interactions. This was just for me to set up the layout in terms of how it will be positioned. Now, if we expand on the off canvas, by default, you will always get one container. 
And normally what you do is you would drop in your items into that container. Let's just expand on that. So here's my container off canvas. And then we got a container inside of that container. I've added in an icon, which you can see over here. I've added in a container or a child container, which contains all of the items here. And then I've added in an image. It's set to be a row and I've got space between and I've also stretched it as well. You can make this look how you want. The reason I've got row is because I wanted my child container on the left and then my image on the right. You don't have to have two child containers if the second child container is just going to contain an image. If you want to go for like a background cover effect style, you could do that. Or if you want to make it easier for yourself, because you might overlap the image with further items, then fine. Now, the icon is sat up here. You're probably wondering, well, how's that gone up there? Let me just go through that. What we have is a plus sign, drop in an icon. OK, go to the uh, SVG, not upload. Why have I gone up there? Go to the icon library and go and type in plus and go and get the plus sign. OK, insert that. Then I've gone and set that to close the off canvas. I'm going to come back onto that. It might feel like I'm jumping around, but stay with me. OK, I've gone to the style, set the size and I've rotated it 45 degrees. Plus sign rotated B comes across. It's really annoying how there isn't actually a cross in the library. So you've got to use the plus sign to do it. But hey, that's how it is. Then I've gone and set the link for this. So you would go over to your dynamic tag, scroll down until you get to off canvas, click the spanner or the wrench. And then this is going to be set to close off canvas and it's selecting the off canvas because I haven't renamed it. So when you click the button, it opens. When you hit the cross, it closes. Bear in mind, though, that if you hit the escape button, it would have closed it. If you click on the overlay, it would have closed it. But if you imagine you're on a mobile and now it's like full screen, like there's no like 80% or anything like that, where are they going to close? So having a X to close it is not a bad idea. Right. So we've got our icon and then I've got this child container. OK, uh, in fact, I'll come back onto the child container. We have an image over here. Let's just get that one out of the way. OK, we've got an image over here. It's bringing over the featured image. And you go and set your size and your layout how you want. OK, it's just bringing over the same image you had before, just a slightly bigger version. Now, the sub child, not the sub child, the child container. Let's just expand on that. This has. It looks like it's got more in there than it actually has. We have a post title. We have a text editor. We have a heading for the price. I've got a custom add to cart over here, down here as well. So if you wanted to show meta details. You wanted to show variation. So rather than people always going to the single product page, let's say you had, you know, small, medium, large, or different colors or things, you could add that all here. And there's a higher chance of conversion as well, because like, they could pick their options, add to cart, now go and look at other items rather than a completely different page. And then they might go, okay, now I need to go back and they might hit the wrong uh, breadcrumb or go to the wrong place or something like that. Or some of the filters might have reset, which could be really annoying. Remember, imagine this is a product page or a post page or anything, and you've got filters, and you might go back and then the filters might have reset. So just think about that. Then down here, I've got the image carousel, and this is pulling over the product images. So I'm just going to show you a few things, right? If we go to the image carousel over here, OK, normally people start picking their images. What you do instead is you click the dynamic tag and I pick the product gallery. That's now bringing over the images that were set for this particular product. Uh, if we go over to this text editor, uh, what I did was I clicked the dynamic tag and I went and picked if I scroll down to product short description. If you've got custom fields inside of your product, which show other things, or maybe you have another description on top of the other description, you know, stuff like that. You can use your custom fields and bring them over. It works absolutely fine. And what I like about when you do off canvas is you can completely tweak and change the layout a little bit. And, and that's basically it. That's basically all I had to do, really. Obviously, hit save and back as well to make sure you're out of it. But when you click it, it's now going to bring over the details. And I've got this carousel playing below. Imagine you've got a video for the product. You could have that. Maybe you've got testimonials for the product. I mean, let's just say, right, these are your three flagship products, right? And you're getting loads of reviews, loads of amazing feedback. Maybe you're selling like uh, furniture or something and people are taking photos on Insta or wherever to say, hey, look, I used your product and look how amazing it's made my home or my life or whatever. You could go into a quick view and you can have these details below. Be like this is a brilliant, brilliant advancement 
in terms of what Elements are doing with the loop grid. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain.